is <laughs> you're watching it's just music on roku signature series Let's Yeah, ninth wonder music. Sick of your tea. Plays on the beat, by the way. Let's give a shout out to the struggle. Yeah, I wanna give a shout out to the struggle. I realize now that you've only made me stronger. And you taught me how to hustle. You taught me how to live this life alone. And I don't need nobody else. They could only bring me down So I'ma get this to the struggle Thank God for the struggle Yeah Deception always had a way of finding me Perfection is someone I wasn't privileged to meet Accepting the fact that I may never live my dream What up y'all? I'll be singing, making another video for my sickos Got my homegirl here with me Brooklyn in the house, you feel me? 216, you heard me? Cleveland in the house, huh? Yes, sir So what kind of music you listen to? Uh, I listen to rap, mainly drill Family, duck, right. R.I.P. R.I.P. to Duck, man. Uh, that, was, that was pretty tragic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's out there uh, shopping for his kids and shit and just he gets yeah. pulled up on. That shit yeah. was... Yeah, that, that was crazy. I seen the whole video and everything. I was like, man, there ain't no way. I didn't believe it at first. I ain't gonna lie. I, I did not believe it until I was like, man, there you go the video. And I was like, ah, uh, I gotta believe it now. But I'm supposed to go see Mans in concert, you feel me? That's sad, man. R.I.P. to Duck. Check this out though. Today we're gonna check out my homie right here, Kung Fu Vampire. Kung Fu Vampire has 25.7 thousand subscribers on his YouTube account. He's got quite a following, you know what I'm saying? I reached out to him and asked him if I could do the show. He told me yeah, so here we are. I don't know, let's check out his first song. Uh, this is 9 months old, 9.3 thousand views. Kung Fu Vampire featuring X-Rated, My Turn, official music video. <laughs> What the world don't know, this is higher elevation, this is a revelation. These are the colors that you be facing. This is every dollar and everybody you chasing. This is for the misconceptions. This is for the love that you lost and you ain't impressive. This is for the manager that didn't have the stamina try to damage your reputation and ruin your mandala amongst friends. This is for the anger I'm harboring. They said I couldn't be a legend, now I'm starving them. I'm half full, ain't no arguing. I'm shaking the industry down in a Lexus, I'm parking sins. On the side of the road where you cut your fins and got thirsty and started hating all of my wins. Trying to work me to feel bad as you grin. Not my enemy, this a repeated Kennedy. Distance has got me mentally prepared for the hatred red pill aware in the matrix sucking the life out of everyone you're an aphid stay in the basement i'm getting a run for my patience an agent awaken containment at 50 percent i stay fuego and now i'm in the movies with their opinions they try to improve me i'm constantly running from lucy's but y'all can fuck off they hate me and gossip and talk and talk he burns me then chase me i walk it off Tired of the slanders and the rumors. Fuck all these clowns in the hubris. I'm a hater, Terminator, Sky, that is my set, and I ain't never been scared of a computer. They're gonna deny you three times, St. Peter. Peter. Would you Peter. ready to crucify the biggest Judas? Give Caesar what belongs to Caesar Brutus. Momentarily upset us, but they'll never rub Brutus. No. I went to Mars to have a conversation with Plato. He told me to beat the allegory of the cave, Plato. You easily influence your brain is like Plato. I'm Cassius Clay when he started worshiping Kudus. I could have your people singing hymns with tulips. Wanted to be a rapper, ended up having to be Buddha. We chasing money, we'll never let it elude us. 
But I'm above giving one of y'all a halo. Overall, I slander. They ask the cop questions they really won't answer. Begging laden on my name with ignorant banter. Culture vultures with opinions is worse than cancers. Africa's coming gangs that only one on disaster. You're an imposter, poser, poser, poser by the implanters. Talk behind my back, but see me, you become recantus. Cancers, cancers, damn. But they got a lot of shit to say when they alone with the camera. Damn. Girl, you ain't seen nothing yet. That that's that's Kung Fu Vampire being himself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you haven't even seen his character yet. Okay? Uh <laughs> I might have known it's gonna be so good. Oh lord. Look at this, Kung Fu. I'm getting you a new fan, man. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um it's been a while since you've released anything, you know, uh, a little bit less than a year. Um, you did the video My Time with X-Rated, and then you did the uh, Tearing Up Your City with Dirtbag Dan. So what do you got in the works right now, man? Yeah. Um, so last week we released a clean version of the album Come Dawn. And uh, we mainly did that because a lot of people were saying how much they'd love to play the uh, album, you know, in their shop front of the kids clean clean hip-hop you know what i mean you're driving on a long road trip you got the kids in the car <laughs> you can play kung fu vampire now so there's a clean version of that available if you guys are interested and you can check it out mm -hmm. um we have been hibernating and preparing for a huge bust out um the first thing that is dropping in 2020 uh out of the three projects i got coming up is called double dragon this project has been super exciting. We, we announced it about 10 months ago and uh, it's complete and ready for launch this year. I can't give you the exact date yet. It's going to be a, a surprise. We've got some great features on there. We've got amazing production. I mean, there's some heavy hitters on the production side of things. Um, yeah, this is exciting. It's, it's really exciting because I've never done a, uh, a group project or a collab project before ever my entire career and so this this album double dragon with buckshot will be the first time ever and i couldn't be more uh happy or proud it's super fun what we're, what we're doing is different okay looking forward to that collaboration with mars man what's that looking forward to a collaboration with mars man yeah we might do a collab uh, ep sometime we've talked about it in the past but yeah, this buckshot one's the first one I've ever done. So it just kind of, it kind of came um, naturally. You know what I mean? It was like, we talked about it. He had been so easy to work with and he, he has a lot of great attributes. He's just such a good guy. So we decided to do that. And I think I'm going to do it with a few other artists as well. Okay. So, so, so that's the next thing dropping and that is coming out in 2020. Awesome. Awesome. So sometime before the year, end of the year, you can get that for the stock and stuffer. <laughs> oh yeah get the edited be, for the kids i don't know if we'll do edited we should if we were smart we would do an edited version because it does have a lot of swearing um <laughs> and then oh yeah but, but come dawn has the mm -hmm. edited version and they can get that for now um not on cd but digital you know but yeah with the double dragon project we have some like huge package deals that are going to be like nothing ever you've ever seen i mean talk about bringing the 80s and the video games back we're doing something very special 
I seen you doing the retro vibe over there on your YouTube and with some of your videos uh, off of Come Don. Um, so you're saying you were working with Buckshot. Uh, I had seen an interview from years ago where you said you uh, you wanted to work with Rob Zombie. Now I wasn't sure, but did you ever end up getting to work with Rob Zombie? I haven't. No, I haven't met him or anything yet. I do have ties to him through uh, my friend Darren, who's the director of the Saw series and a few other people. But, um, you know, he's not an easy one to get. Definitely. Get, uh, strapped down you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah that is not an easy man to contact mm -mm. <laughs> let's be honest it's all about numbers it doesn't matter how amazing kung fu vampire is or isn't it's about numbers For you know sure. if i hit up rob zombie and had a video that had half a billion views i'm pretty sure he'd pick up the call you mm -hmm. know i mean there's people that have been talking about doing collabs with me that are big artists but they haven't happened yet because of the numbers you know what i mean so it's it's unfortunate that people operate that way, but it's the, it is the nature, and it's it's important to accept the nature of things. You know what I mean, and work harder. And that's my my thing. I don't get down about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. So, um, you know, I I know you've been grinding since like ninety one, ninety two. You've been you know out there working. Uh, no, two thousand one. Two thousand. Two thousand one. Really? You haven't been making. Yeah, I don't music? know why it says that online. That I would be way too young for that. Two thousand one. We we started this thing, and I started very young. So. Okay. 14, 14 years old, I started to rap and put the first record out as a teenager. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, did, I, I didn't, I never seen you um, until like, I don't know, 2014 ish, something like that. Yeah. That's I didn't it. actually get out, um, out um, and about into the world until about 09, 2010. So I, I, I really, it was, I did a small tour with Mars and Project Born in 2009 that just touched down in arizona salt lake washington california um nevada and then um in in late 09 and then in uh summer 09 i did a few shows with isham but then 2010 i banged out a 52 day tour with twisted came right back in 11 and did three more tours came back in 12 and did two 13 now i'm 17 tours deep since 2010 i've just done you know, two or three a year, probably two on average a year since then. Okay. And a little less than two, right? Because uh, I've done about 18 tours from from Twisted to ICP to a ton of my own headlining tours and Locksmith, Recognize, um, done some runs, uh, one kind of small section of Tech Nine's uh, uh, big 100 city tour. So it's, we really didn't, we, you know, I started this thing at, in 2001, but we really didn't start this thing till 2010. You know, we were kind of for about eight or nine years kind of brewing and doing shows in California. And I was building the big band and, you know, released a couple albums. But it wasn't until the big touring happened that things ramped up, you know? Yeah. What was your favorite tour out of all those that you were on? Which one you say you had the most fun on? Um, so they, they've all got different qualities, right? So, like, I, I would say the the slaughterhouse tour with twisted because that was our first big tour and they kind of uh they kind of stood up for us when they wanted us on tour they didn't know who we were they saw my video my very first video hit and uh people started liking it and posting it on juggalo related sites before i knew what what juggalos were they were and um they saw we it and right away they on. latched on what's that except you early on man <laughs> um yeah, they, they latched on. Someone posted on Fago Lovers, Twisted saw the video and said, we want these guys. Psychopathic said, nah, we want to put so-and-so. And they're like, nope, we're bringing Kung Fu Vampire. We don't care. The name I've worked with, uh, shout out to Frank Nitty, man. Check out the song Homage. Shit's dope. It'll be singing in Homage. Nice. Project Born? Yeah, hmm. yeah good dude. Man. Very humble, so man. We, we, I would say that tour because it went from, you know, being too different for hip hop shows, being too EDM, too rap for rock shows, not ever fitting in, being like kind of ahead of our time, you know, we were never really accepted. So for to get on a tour where, I mean, that was Twisted's peak, right? So since then, I mean, it's nothing like that. They were doing, there was 2,000 people a night, 3,000 people. Every night was 1,000 people. I mean, huge. Yeah, it was And we were a support act on that tour for them with our boys Potluck. And that was the biggest tour, the most excitement, the most dopamine, the most serotonin, because it's like, here we are with this great thing that we've been kind of honing and nobody's really seen it on a global scale. And then boom, we get a, 
opportunity to get out with somebody like them. So shout out to Twisted. I love them for that, for having faith and being about the art. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I think when you fuck with Kung Fu, you're fucking with someone that's about the art, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was probably my, my favorite tour, being that it was the first big one. Um, the ICP tour in 2013 was very cool because uh, the Fago Armageddon every night, you know, although it was messy, uh, I did it quite a few times, maybe five or six times. And um, that was wild. That's always you know? fun. But truthfully, man, I, I haven't been touring with other people. I've been doing headlining tours and co-headlining tours for years now. Haven't gone out with anybody. And I like that the best. It's oh. different, you know. Well, yeah, it's probably always better when you're doing your own thing, so to speak, when you're the one that's, you know, got the uh, got the show going out every night. You're the headliner. You're the, you know, the closing act. Um, I had seen that you had like this crazy like Yoda painting in your studio. Um, how do you, can you tell me a story about how you got that? Um, there was a, a crazy Yoda painting. Um, it was either painting or a picture. I was just wondering if there was like a story oh, oh. behind that. That's my drummer, uh, Paxton's. I don't know where he got that. I know he got it for free, though, so that's pretty dope. Okay, yeah, that's definitely dope. That oh, yeah, dope. That's, in, that's in our studio in Oakland. He's the owner of the studio. But he's my engineer and my drummer, and he produced uh, 1986 and Madonna. And then he's produced tracks on our up-and-coming album um, that is coming out after Double Dragon. You remember Peabody's in Cleveland, Ohio? Yeah, that, that show was interesting because um, it was picked up after only two weeks notice when we were with Potluck. Yep. Uh, who, whoever, promoter, you know, picked it up pretty short notice, which yeah, was cool. Um, what was that guy's name? Um, Bun Bundy, I do believe. Shout out to Bundy. Or yeah, Bundy. that was nice of him to do that because, you know, it's a bigger risk when you only got two weeks or something to promote something. So he picked it up for us um, and that was great, you know. Yeah, I got to open for you that night, man. It was quite an experience. Pretty cool. Yeah, I had the upstairs, kind of a crazy upstairs with graffiti everywhere, I think. I, I faintly remember it just being kind of kind of gritty. This anymore. They knocked it down. Everybody moved to the Agora. Yeah, and I've only played there since, which is nice. It's a nice spot. It's bigger, you know. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Let me show you one of my favorite ones. Let me uh, find this real quick. I like that nutty. Go crazy. Kung Fu Vampire featuring Dirtbag Dan, Tearing Up Yo City, official music video. Nine months old, 12,000 plays. Yeah, I like to smoke. City to shreds, marking my territory like I'm lifting my leg. I take that pineapple fanta, mix it in with the red. The way I slide on all this ice is like the whip is a sled. She call me Santa Claus, everyone knowing the Dana boss. I get the word that the cannon's off, that's a whole lot of magazines. You get the catalog, wanna battle guard, get your bars up. Face to face, and that's hard luck. Talk shit, you get boxed up, you might end up in a car trunk, cuz. They don't got shit on the boss. Nah. I'm clean like a whip out the wash. Clean. You see that I'm dripping in sauce. Walking on water, I'm skipping across. My on your bitch with my dick in her jaw. She let the homies all getting it raw. Gross. I do the most. I came to smoke and I'm here on my phone. Yeah, I like to smoke. And when my friends with me, all my people high on that with me. Yeah, I like to drink. And when my gang with me, man, we come tearing up your city, bitch. Lately, I've been fucking up. Drunk on a highway, busting knots. Loose cannon, I'm on off for rock. Selling everything I own just to cop a dub. A hot mess, I'm a lot to love. They can drag me to hell, but I'm higher than dub. A weirdo like Shia LaBeouf, I eye in the glove. I'm talking to pigeon, Mike Tyson, my religion isn't giving, I ain't giving a fuck. Unless we talking soup. 
How about the coop and I'm smoking another joint? I ain't got no ops, I ain't slanging coke. We may do Somali mixed with Henny, bro. Back from the dead like I'm Kenny, though. Death I'm anonymous, higher than every holiday. Put together, I'm a hominid, a ramen, and I'm vomiting. The comedy holding my girl's hair over the porcelain god. But I get it all out. I put the IV in my arm. Hair of the dog, no need for alarm. Gotta drink Pedia light with the people I like. Got the inner demon in me, no need to be right. When I'm this drug and this high, I don't put up a fight. Yeah, I like to smoke. smoke. Right, this is this is Speechless. the Gina mu this is the Gina music that I I yeah. myself enjoyed the most. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just is what it is. This shit is different. It's not meant for everybody. Um, I'm glad you're liking it though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Kung Fu Vampire de is definitely a talented individual. I mean, look at these well, plays, yo. And he's underground. You ain't never even heard of him. Right. You know what I mean? Well, Kung Fu Vampire, you got yourself a new fan because I really like your music. You go hard. Um. So. I know you've said before you're like big into Japanese culture and everything. You think Japanese culture is amazing. Japanese culture is amazing. Do you, is there? Uh, do you like anime? Is there any particular anime that you've been watching? You know, it's funny you say it's it's crazy you brought that up. I almost knew that was coming. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Um, so I'm not into anime, but my daughter, who just turned nine, is a absolute fanatic. So. I'm seeing anime all the time now. That's I let her watch anime. She loves Japanese style anime, and it's. She changed my Zoom profile pic to an anime character. I had to switch it back. <laughs> That's funny. Do you know what her her favorite anime? What what's she into right now? Um, like something X something and Todoroki. I don't. I don't like. I Hunter, really don't know. Hunter X Hunter and my Hunter hero. X, yeah, my hero. Yeah. She, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she likes that, and and uh, there's about four of them that I notice she's watching a lot. So it's pretty cool. I like that she's into it. You know what I mean? Word, word. So if you weren't doing music today, uh, you know, where do you think you'd be? What do you think you'd be doing? Um, you know, I would definitely probably be hustling. Unfortunately, um, just just the way things are, man. I'd probably be doing something illegal. Um, on the legal side. I'm definitely into, I'm finding that I'm very into architectural design, landscape design, you know, interior design. I love that kind of shit. Like if okay. you see my room right now, like it's pretty tight. And it, like <laughs> I did it myself, it's, it's nothing fancy. It's on a budget, but you know, I like design. You know, But you designed design. it, you know, it's your, it's your style. So that's why I that's designed why my whole it. house in, inside and out, every room everything i've done from scratch and take a lot of pride in it and you know I'm, I'm constantly trying to improve you know and i and it's something that i love doing so there's no pressure you know that's cool that's cool yeah um what is the what do you feel is the best song that you've ever released and why like what was your favorite out of everything you've done well i'm gonna go with I mean, there would probably be two or three that were pretty equal. I can't really pin it down to one. Mm -hmm. I find myself listening to um, 1986, Madonna, Baddies, and maybe Trapped in Hell. Um, maybe a close tie between those three and Duality, maybe. Those four or five would be the ones that I like. Trapped in Hell touches people the video came out great the feature is great it's mixed well the beats good mm -hmm. you know duality i find a lot of people connect with that um and then on the new album it's just better like working with paxton who's, who's been in my band over 10 years to produce the tracks we just came up with something that hits exactly where i want it to with 86 and madonna mm -hmm. and then um also i would say fire man that song fire with locksmith and, and uh, ubi from Seth's crew 
those are those are the top songs to me you know i mean i find mm -hmm. myself listening to madonna because it hits me in a way where you know it's not necessarily a heartfelt song but it just it's just a good it just sounds good just you sound know? yeah you you like the way it is from start to finish yeah it, it's you, sonic it's it's funny it's it's lyrical it's very well mixed you know what i mean um 1986 probably a close tie because it's fun um i actually have a remix of that coming out with two bay area heavyweights featured on it and we're going to be shooting the video here soon it's it's been long overdue but it's never too late you know i mean only only my fans have heard the album so you know putting out a video it's just going to expand the fan base and, and excite the existing fans okay okay so so what really got you into music in the beginning you know all the way back in the day what really got you into it yeah so there's there's kind of two it's a two-part intro to my career uh, both have kind of a funny, cool story. Uh, the first being, I was always into to rap, into hip hop, NWA, Busta Rhymes and stuff as a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did like rock as well, you know, Slayer, Metallica, whatever. Nine Inch Nails was like my big thing. Rob oh, Zombie, Marilyn Manson. Definitely. And um, there was two kids, man. They, they were in eighth grade. They were maybe seventh and eighth grade. They were rapping on the schoolyard. And people would circle around them. And I didn't rap at the time. I played drums and I played bass guitar in the school band. Okay. But I was always getting kind of yelled at from day one by band teachers because I would play hip hop beats <laughs> on the drums. You know, they want me to play boom, crack, boom, boom, crack. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't. Play, ba boom, tap, tap, ta boom, tap, tap, ta boom, tap, boom, tap. You know, I would just add to, and they'd be like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> so. I was always like, it was burning inside me to do my own thing. I just didn't know it. And I saw these dudes. It was a, one black kid and a white kid, man. I'll never forget it. They were a duo. They would rap. Everybody would circle them. And I circled around once or twice and was like, these guys suck. They're <laughs> not dope. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I just straight up wasn't a rapper or anything at the time. I didn't rap. And I just thought they sucked. I was just like, they suck. I could rap better. I don't even rap. You know? And uh, I was unimpressed. And that was a little bit of a kind of, I don't want to say negative inspiration, but it was a little like little fire under me, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, those fools can do it. They're not good. Um, they weren't terrible, but they definitely weren't, didn't, they were drawing a huge crowd around them on the schoolyard. You feel mm -hmm. me? And then um, summer before my freshman year, I met some guys who had a little sampling keyboard. The, the It was such an old ass keyboard. I don't, they got it at a garage sale or something. And they were sampling and I said, you know, I came over and I started rapping to their beats and they were starting to write raps. And when I, uh, we were making beats late night, you know what I'm saying? I was an athlete at the time, so I was tired. I'd go over there, we'd get stoned and make beats uh, right before a freshman year and during freshman year. And uh, we would do that till uh, my eyes were bleeding. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And about a few months into the school year of my freshman year, I uh, basically kept getting yelled at by this, this school teacher in music class. And I threw the, I actually threw the drumsticks at her face in front of class and told her to fuck off. And I walked out of class and she said, you're never coming back. I said, cool, I'm starting my own group. Yeah. You. <laughs> and I got suspended for about five days and had to go to a, um, so, some type of meetings and stuff to uh, talk about it. My parents kind of had my back because the, the, the music teacher was a bitch. She was a notorious bitch, like just known, just a bitch. You know what I mean? Just not happy. And so they kind of had my back. And then uh, we started this rap group and we had, we, it was, then, then it kind of morphed into Kung Fu Vampire and it was a rap from there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I kind of always dabbled in the instrumentation and, and was making beats started making a lot of beats i made a lot of my earlier beats and then the last you know eight years i'm just i'm just rapping only you know yep, and rapping. handling the business yeah yep. just singing rapping handling the business merchandise etc so uh i know you probably did quite a bit of interviews but uh what do you think is the weirdest or funniest question that you've ever been asked in an interview <laughs> <laughs> um you know, I, 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 uh, I don't know if you've heard of the roast and review guys, yeah. Yeah. they, they were, so they kind of set me up disrespectfully. I have only been disrespected yeah, they once. Huh? They do, they do that. Fuck the roast and review. I'll say that on my show right now. 
That's the way I feel, though. <laughs> yeah, so what they did was disrespectful for one reason, is that I couldn't see them, but they could see me. Right. Okay. You feel me? And I'm an easy target, bro. I have four-inch high hair, you know, crazy glasses on. <laughs> but the uh, one of the guys was showing me love. He was like, yo, your music is fucking fire, period. He was showing mad love. The other dude was talking shit. But had I been able to see dude that was talking shit, the, the whole interview would have went the other way. Like, he's a corny-ass clown. You know what I mean? He looks like a goofball. He got zits on his face, red hair. He don't got no body. I would choke this fool out. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> these, both these guys, like, how dare you talk like that to me on an interview you asked me to be on? I'm a respectful guy. And, and you're just cutting me off and being weird because you could see me, I can't see you. Had I seen him, I would have roasted the shit out of him. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Grown ass he's man. Just because he's got a little with... following and shit. Oh, his ego is. Yeah, he... like, like if I see them in person, he ain't gonna act the same. There's no way. And I'm only five foot five, but I will literally choke the fuck out of ninety percent of people walking on this planet. <laughs> and he would not ooh, talk like that to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and yeah. and, and I, I don't. I'm not even mad. It was just weird. Like. At least let me see you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't look at me in an interview and I can't see you. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's just cheating. That's cheating. If yeah. I could see you, I'd roast the fuck out of you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I didn't know what I was even looking at. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> so um, they were just asking me weird, stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, they, they, they definitely were good at what they do. Um, I, I can't I've done so many interviews. I can't remember the weirdest question. I think people have asked me like, oh, if you were a cartoon character, which other cartoon character would you want to have sex with? Things like that. I'm just what? like, I don't think about stuff like that, man. I don't know. But um, yeah, I've done too many interviews to remember. I just remember that was the only interview where I was like, yo, I thought you guys, you guys came off like you were fans of my music and you're disrespecting me on your show and I can't even see you. I thought that was weird, you know? That's nuts. Blaze on another. Ninth Wonder, man. Check out Blaze Hunter Ninth Wonder's music review show because it's a lot better than Rust and Review. I promise you that. Okay, make sure when we're done with this, you send me a text, please, because I would love to see, you know. Dork Squad, too. Dork stuff. Squad in the house. Shout out, Chris. Nice. That's yeah. good, man. It's all about <laughs> unity, bro. I don't, yeah. Like, we live in a world where there's no time for negativity, and I put music into my – everything I do since I was 14 years old, bro, so to bring me on an uh, interview and talk like that, like – if they did it in person, I'd have more respect for them. I'd say, hey, that's cool. You want the smoke. But when, when I can't see you, you know what I mean? If I can't see you. Check this one out. Kung Fu Vampire featuring Futuristic Trapped in Hell. No more living in fear. Get your mind up. Time to fly them tires some. I'm losing fights with myself. I'm feeling trapped in here. Suicidal thoughts. Time to finalize my plots. Abusing all of my will. Feeling like you're trapped in hell. Get your mind numb. Time to fly them tires some. I'm winning fights with myself. I'm feeling trapped in here. Suicidal thoughts. Fuck that. It's time to plot. Too much love for myself. Now I'm crawling out of hell. Trapped in the dark, in the dark. Love lost the collapse in the heart. heart. From the start, had a passion for art. Couldn't pass with a gas when I spazzed from the start. From the start. Grams past life ain't been the same. same. Chasing holes in my soul that remain. remain. Autopilot as I stroll through the day. Combo with the bros, but I hold in the pain. Feel like I got hit by a train. I indulge in the drinks, the liquor is in my veins. Chilling with a chick that I met at the club. Take her home, then I fuck. I don't even know her name. 
Damn, then the cycles repeat Most nights I can't even sleep I was trying to be living my dreams Running through quicksand I sing That was 2014 and a nigga made it out Four years later, homie, look at the account Knew that I could get it, a nigga was independent Had to work a little different just to get a quicker route Now you probably see me living with a smile Was about to throw in a towel until I figured it out Cause nothing about the cloud, it's all about who you with Only rock with my clique and everyone in the crowd Get your mind numb, time to fly, I'm tiresome I'm losing fights with myself I'm feeling trapped in here Suicidal thoughts, time to finalize my plots Abusing all of my will Feeling like you're trapped in hell Get your mind numb, time to fly, I'm tiresome I'm winning fights with myself I'm feeling trapped in here Suicidal thoughts, fuck that, it's time to plot Too much love for myself Now I'm crawling out of hell Nice Tech Nine cameo. That right there, that was some heat. Yeah, man, I really like the message behind your music, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, the suicidal thoughts. That's something a lot of people deal with every yep. day, including myself. Uh, depression is a bitch, man. I'm I'm, I'm happy to see you do a song that can help people out of that kind of shit. You know? Sure. Yeah, that was that was tough. That going on my playlist. Yeah, I'm gonna play this one with Lex the Hex Master, cause you know Lex the Hex is dope. Lex, yo, if you see this, man, I'd like to do a show on you, man. Hit me up.
Yeah, that vampire feel to that is, is great. It, that, I like the video. The video was tough. I really enjoyed that. Right, like I said, you know what I'm saying? I like I, it's catchy. I'd really like to do a show on Lex, because Lex is dope. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hit me up, bro, if you see this shit. I, I, I just yeah, need, Lex. I just need the yes. That's yeah, all I need, Lex. you know what I'm saying? I mean, you better say yeah. Um, so back in the day, you, you, you had your vampire look a lot more than you do now. You know what I'm saying? Is there a reason for that? Is there a reason you like backed off of your vampire look? So a lot of people don't know this. Um, that was an extremely short-lived look, and almost nobody knows that. Nobody. Very short-lived. I've been doing this since 2001. I mean, we're talking 19 years. And from 01 till 08, I, had, I, I, I did do the bald thing after a while, but no paint. Right? I was doing like a bald thing with suits and my mm -hmm. goatee contacts right before everybody before twisted before hops and i was doing contacts period it's not even debatable i have the receipt from 1998 where i bought the contacts like it's just not debatable but i kind of got it from oh what you got there you got it, bro white outs no they're red but i don't know how you do it that hurt so bad i don't do it i hate it i hate it it's not good for your eyes bro i don't it's not worth the risk um I had been doing kind of this look where I had bangs. Okay, a lot of people don't know I had long white dyed bangs with black slick back hair. And I had the pointy rings and the Asian outfits. I did that look for quite a while. Mm -hmm. from, from like beginning to like 08. Then in like 08, I started painting and doing the emperor gown. And I only did it from like 08, maybe 07 to like 2010, 2011. Uh. <laughs> Those teeth, yeah. Those are good ones, man. Yeah, I just don't have the shit to keep them glued in. <laughs> yes. Oh, those are dope. Yeah. So, no, so I know the vampire shit. Look. I do it once in a while, and it's just music, man. There's only a couple episodes. Right. Oh right? uh, seven to two thousand ten. When I went on that tour with Twisted, and I came out from around that curtain in Buffalo, New York, and there was seventeen hundred people, and. 1500 of them had their faces painted i was like whoa this is fucking fire <laughs> but by the time i was done with that tour i was like yo that's their thing i didn't know there was a genre of people that did that thing mm. i had no idea no idea right. i knew who icp was everybody knows that but i didn't know the culture behind it nothing so to find out there's a whole culture painted i dipped away from that so i had been rocking the bald head another year with no paint. That. That, mean, that means you're not a copycat. Yeah, I just right. didn't want to do their thing. I wanted them to do their thing. And, and then when, when we got pregnant with my daughter, I let my hair grow. And I ended up starting rocking that slick back look that I rocked from 2011 till 16, 17, when I started letting it just fro up like this. And then since 17, I've just been rocking this, the high hair. And this is just, it does its own thing. It doesn't get more natural. This is no, this is just how my hair is. You know what I mean? So it was such a short lived thing, but it's stuck in people's brains so strong. You know what I mean? It's like getting in a car accident. You never forget that car accident. And it's like with that face paint, people remember that look heavily. And I basically stopped because it was way too much work. I'd rather focus on the music. I'd rather sign autographs and hang with the people who paid to get into the concert. And I'm not trying to put cheap ass shit in my eyes. I'm not trying to cover up my looks. I want to give people the raw, real me. And this is the raw, real me. You Respect. Know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. <clears throat> I know you've collabed with a lot oh, of musicians. A lot of the review shows, they... Oh, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. Oh, go you're ahead. good. You're good. I didn't say, I know you've collabed with a lot of musicians, Kung Fu. Um, who would you like to collaborate with next? Have you heard of the group Suburban? Uh, it's like two words. It's separated. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of them. Um, I'm really, I'm really feeling them. I'm, I, I would like to do something with Twenty One Pilots. Okay. Um, I would like to do something with Run the Jewels. Um, Tech asked me to be on. It's, Tech's been trying to get me on something for a decade and hasn't <laughs> done it. I'd really like us to finally fucking do it. We've been friends for. 10 years or plus we've been friends more than 10 years Make that um, looking forward to that too i'm a huge technician yeah. um e40 who's my my idol i would love to do a song with e40 
Um, G Easy would be amazing. Um, I'm a huge, huge um, Doja Cat, Megan The Stallion, female like ratchet ass hip hop fan. So like, getting a song with them or Rico Nasty, Mulatto, any of them would be really cool. But okay. for me, you know, the suburban Twenty One Pilots run the Jewels Lane would be really cool. Okay, yeah, that would that would definitely be dope. That would be I mean something to check out. Um, if you could have your fans remember one thing about you, you know, forever, what would it be? Um, basically, that I haven't cut any corners. I took the longest, hardest, most respectable route possible to get to where I'm at. I, um, I have had opportunities to be a snake, do things to get ahead, and I've declined at every, every corner, you know, over the years. Um, and I would hope they would respect the fact that I've turned down deals from most of the underground labels. Let's mm -hmm. just say most. Most. So if there's five or six, four of them have offered me labels and I haven't, I haven't taken them for one reason or another, no disrespect to them. Um, and then I've had about three or four major label offers and I've turned those down as well. Mm -hmm. So I would hope people would just remember me as the guy who wanted to give the best possible music from the, from the bottom of just zero boss, zero business involved, just here, mm -hmm. here's something that, you can feel forever, you know, and I feel like come on nailed that. And I want to take it even further. Um, and I want, I want to just keep elevating, you know what I mean? Not, not get stuck in any kind of business situation that hinders the creativity. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Cause sometimes some of those labels, they try to dictate what you do or they'll tell you, Hey, you can't put this out here, take this music and bring this back. And, uh, you know, they're, they're yeah, taking yeah, cuts gonna, of your money not, and stuff like that. I'll go get a job at Google, man. Google's down the street. You know what I'm saying? I'll go make real money if I'm going to have a boss. Mm -hmm. I'll get that that salmon, that's that lobster for lunch for free. <laughs> make them six figures if I'm going to have a boss. That's why I'm doing music. No boss, right? After this interview, guess what I have to do? Nothing. I don't got to do anything. Or I could walk downstairs and drop Whoa. some of these collab verses I owe people. Or I could go lay on the couch and watch forensic files and get high as fuck. I could call some girls over. That That freedom is the most important, biggest thing in the world, man. You know? Definitely, definitely. You know, by the way, uh, I know a lot of these I do for free for, you know what I'm saying, bigger artists, but hey, if you're an up-and-coming artist and you want to be on It's Just Music, you want to be on the Roku channel, I got a deal going on where you can you can make it on the Spotify playlist, the SoundCloud playlist, uh, a YouTube playlist, all kind of stuff. Get your music out there, man. Be on Blaze It Up Radio, all kind of stuff. Here's the flyer. Check it out. Kung Fu Vampire. Jeez, I can't even fucking talk. <laughs> of everything that exists but i still spit subconsciousness screaming out fuck you bitch that's the enemy synergy victory lap running those early i was weary of traps i got adopted by eight witches and i was raised by wolves and when my daughter was born i started using the tools erase the bad behavior a world enslaver a alcoholic enabler fable teller i'm a genie giving out kalanapins in honor of dire straits and what they hollering frolic about knowledge creates wisdom understanding and the freedom to shout the devil when I eat in and out I think about how she bleeds from inside of her mouth Even though I could take you by myself I got some help Better not try the emperor is bad for your health Ain't nobody sweeter even the diabetic I am a leader, you are a lemon, a diuretic Sometimes I feel like I'm not even human I'm spicy, I body the cumin My vision is tunnel consuming Dilated with the movement Annihilated and truant I'm fraudulent, left in ruins Flatulence, but I'm gassing Masculine with a passion Mask in action Packed with traction My brother's splashing A golden gate with a worker's cross Hippie hill with a turp sauce Best weed, best women, best weather the next season, next strike, still trying with Heather, 90 degrees in July, stay wearing leather. I, I had the privilege to open for him at the Agora in Cleveland, Ohio one time. It was really? pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Hey.
him and Potluck and there was a bunch of people. I forget what tour it was. A long time ago. Well, I guess if you had one message that you could give to your fans, what would it be? What would you want to let your fans know out there? Uh, just to, you know, like in regards to my music, mm -hmm. you know, like just to spread it every way they can. I, I need all the help I can, despite what it may look like. <laughs> You know, we, we're not in a position where we have other artists or labels or anybody helping us. In fact, at times I feel like those labels purposely try to leave us off shit or out of shit to because they're hating because they're not making money off of us. Mm -hmm. So just push it, spread it, show people, follow us on Spotify. That's the biggest thing. Go to the Kung Fu Vampire Spotify, hit follow, add us to your playlists. You know what I mean? That's the wave. That's what's important right now. You know what I mean? Same thing with the YouTube um, we just need more interaction and engagement and people really spreading it through word of mouth and, and whatever else, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's really tough right now with COVID and everything. I'm sure that's affected, uh, you know, your touring and affected your business also probably, uh, affected, uh, you know, a lot of things. How, how have you been dealing with all that? You know, how's that been, um, you know, telling you, tell me how that's been treating you with COVID and everything out there in California. You know, we had the two tours canceled. So we had a June, July tour. And then this fall coming up, both tours obviously canceled. Um, luckily, we didn't announce either. So that wasn't that bad. There was a lot of work done on the first, you know, on the first uh, run, the June tour, there was a lot of all the booking was done. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not touring. So it's about just doing collabs, selling merch, but I don't push my merch like that. I don't like to constantly push stuff. So if people hit the website, buy some merch that helps, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm just doing collabs, man, stocks, financial stuff. I got other little hustles, you know, it's all music related, you know what I mean? But if it wasn't for Spotify and the streams, that keeps us floating. The shirts, buying merch, you know, that's what keeps us floating. For sure, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, are you sure you don't have any more questions, I just got LB? On the Spotify game. <laughs> He said he just got on the Spotify game. I mean, just put it out of the interview. I'll, uh, I'll take this part out of the interview, but how much for a feature, bro? Oh, just hit me up. We'll talk business, and um, I'm doing them, like, daily right now. And if you get a, if people get a feature with me that's different, is that I'll help people get the best graphic guy at a good price for the single. And then I'll actually promote the single on my social media. Um. A good example of what getting me on a song can do is my, my good friend Clockwork from Gorilla Voltage. He recently got me on a song called Hell Froze. And it's got, you know, seven times the uh, plays on streams on Spotify as any of his other songs. And it came out after because I helped push it. I'm on it. So getting, getting me on it is revenue for the person buying the feature for life. You know what I mean? So I like to guide the people who get features from me. Hey, Hit up this guy or this guy for graphics, run it back. Let's make sure it sounds good. Okay, I'll, I'll do a post or two on my social media for you and, and help boost and give you that initial boost to get the song going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. As but, opposed to me just saying, here, I'm selling you a verse. Have a nice day. You know? I'll leave all that in because, I mean, I'm sure a lot of upcoming MCs would like to know that about you. You know? Yeah, I try to let them know because I get I get inquiries every day. One, at least I would say on average about 20 to 30 a, a month. Uh, people saying, hey, how much for a verse? And, you know, a large percentage of them get them, but more people just shop around, you know, looking for verses. And uh, that's one thing that is different is that I will help make sure that it it's, comes out right, at least a little bit of guidance, you know? Why not? Shout out to Blaze Hunter Night Wonder. I was born to a queen, never had a dad, he was so quick to leave Always putting booty for his family 27 years later, soul searching, trying to find the real me Went down the road for the time being, came out and knew me Started chasing my dreams, next thing you know you started seeing me on TV Hollywood in the hood, shout out to Player T LB, sick O, E, and D, that's the team I've been at it ever since I was a teen Dropped out of school at the age of 17 Middle finger to those who died of me All the hatred never bothered me If anything, it motivated me to do better Started chasing paper, got a stack of cheddar Hitting licks ain't the way I wanna live my music I be doing it for my kids, yeah
yeah, I do it for yeah, my yeah, kids. Yeah. Father. We don't need him. Made a promise to myself, I'll never be him. I am here for my child. They're in need. I walk a mile. Chris will bleed. He's a coward. Anger breeds. And I'm sour. We grew up without a father. We don't need him. Made a promise to myself, I'll never be him. I am here for my child. They're in need. I walk a mile. Chris will bleed. He's a coward. Anger breeds. And I'm sour. 1986. I was born to a queen. Never had a dad. He was always quick to leave. Chasing high, instead of spending time with me Track marks down his arm, and we sleeping in the tent He spent the money on his dope, so we couldn't pay the rent Cash spent, ever since my mother got us out the gutter If I ever see that man, I'm gonna kill, kill the motherfucker Where your balls at, little boy, I grew to be a man Why you never grew up, I guess I call you Peter Pan I look my child in the eyes, I can never leave the side Real fathers testify, that beats go reside We never played, cause you didn't see my first day You never even met my child, how you look yourself in the face I hope you die alone on your deathbed doesn't equal the amount of my tears shed Little boy, yeah, I've grown Didn't have learned from your mistakes You did the best you could for me Your junkie ass just stayed away We grew up without a father We don't need him Made a promise to myself I'll never be him I am here for my child They're in need I walk a mile Chris will bleed He's a coward Anger breeds And I'm sour We grew up without a father We don't need him Made a promise to myself I'll never be him I am here for my child They're in need I walk a mile Chris will bleed He's a coward Anger breeds And I'm sour We grew up without a father We don't need him Made a promise to myself I'll never be him I am here for my child They're in need I walk a mile Chris will bleed He's a coward Anger breeds And I'm sour We grew up without a father We don't need him Made a promise to myself I'll never be him I am here for my child They're in need I walk a mile Chris will bleed He's a coward Anger breeds And I'm sour We grew up without a father We don't need him Made a promise to myself I'll never be him I am here for my child They're in need I walk a mile Chris will bleed He's a coward Anger breeds And I'm sour We said we weren't gonna do this. Right. We straight, right? Right?
He's so...